and I was born in Providence, Rhode Island in 1950. You forgot your name. I forgot my, I didn't forget my name. <laughs> uh, my name is Anthony Caldemone. So during high school, I was uh, living at home. Uh, my mother worked at my uncle's grocery store, which was about a half a mile from the house. My father worked for the railroad. It, initially, it was called the uh, New Haven, New York, New Haven, Hartford Railroad. Uh, my sister went to the local high school, Mount Pleasant High School. And also living in our house were one set of grandparents, my mother's uh, grandparents, who had uh, retired, uh, but both had come to the United States from Italy directly as teenagers. Um, I graduated uh, in June uh, 1968. Um, and approximately 90% of my class went straight on to college from there, being lower middle class um, type of family um, and having parents who did not have the opportunity to go to college, this was something new and different. And the idea of going off to college and living somewhere out of the home was a little bit foreign to deeply rooted Italian cultures from lower middle class families. So when I did enroll at Brown, I was 18 years old. Uh, I knew why I wanted to go to college. It had nothing to do with getting out of the house. That wasn't an issue at all. It was an easy place to live at home. But it had to do with uh, a means to get where I wanted to go, and that is to become a physician. I knew I had to go to college to accomplish that. Um, so what used to catch my eye as something I wanted to strive toward tended to be people who obviously came from more affluent backgrounds than I did. And as a result, they dressed differently to some extent. Um, the biggest, coolest thing I can remember, believe it or not, were topsiders, which I'd never seen before. It was one of my goals that I was going to get a pair of topsiders because that would make me pretty cool. Um, they were pretty expensive at the time though, I think they were about 18 bucks. That and, uh, and, and khaki pants and um, polo shirts with some sort of emblem on the side was the way you really looked sort of like you came from uh, an established family with, uh, with good financial background. Um, music was all over the place. I mean I liked the rock stuff certainly. Um, you know, the Beatles, the Beach Boys, the Dave Clark Five, those sorts of groups I really liked listening to a lot. But it wasn't like we were going to hop in a car and drive up to Boston to go to a concert or even to a restaurant or anything like that. It seemed like our whole life was all, all we needed and all we needed to deal with was just, uh, was just right in front of us all the time. And hanging out meant going to various sporting events, into the football games on Saturday afternoon. Rarely went down to bars and things, although uh, other fringe friends uh, did that pretty commonly. We didn't seem to get involved with that. Friends of mine got involved with radio stations, and so we used to um, tune in to WBRU fairly regularly and um, even call in on occasion and give our friends a hard time. You never sort of went anywhere to look for, for dates. Um, it sort of happened usually in classes, uh, you know, areas where you would go get a cup of coffee or something like that on campus, but you never sort of went anywhere else. There obviously were parties to go to. Um, and that was certainly another area, but everything revolved around campus life. There was just so much activity on, college, on the college campus all the time that it was very, very easy to meet people, and that's where most of the uh, dating scene initiated.
So the Vietnam, Vietnam War was a um, significant focus during my college years, and it um, came to a culmination between college and medical school. It was um, a strongly unpopular war on campus for a variety of reasons. Um, there was always that sentiment that kids were being drafted to eventually go to Vietnam rather than being able to go to college. And in fact, that certainly was the situation. Uh, it was around the time when the lottery system was established and uh, fortunately I was exempt from the lottery system because I was in medical school or heading to medical school. So that gave me a little bit of a reprieve uh, for a while anyway. Um, but during my sophomore year, was the year of the uh, Kent State protest and that had a profound effect on campus. So, you know, it was, a, it was a volatile time and there was certainly lots of activity on campus. I would not say that it was a, the, the protests were against the government as much as it was against the war and the futility of the war and the fact that lots of Americans were dying uh, in Vietnam for a cause that very few of us were able to understand or sympathize with. So at 22, I was sort of in the transition between undergraduate school and medical school. But um, friends of mine who were not in medical school were out in the job force at that point. And the expectation was not that they would have time to go find themselves or go travel for a while um, or you know, look for other opportunities, but that they were going to be gainfully employed in a relatively short period of time. And although the economy uh, back you know, early 70s was not thriving, it was also not terribly depressed. So that expectation, I think, was, was a reasonable expectation. Medical school was very, very different, of course, because um, it was just, you know, another graduate education, but it became extremely more focused and, um, and the stakes became higher and higher. Um, so my goals were to finish as high in the class as I possibly could to get a good residency program, and that would obviously open the doors for lots of opportunities. So now I'm 58 years old, soon to be 59, living in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, as we have been for the last 25 years, uh, with a very, very stable lifestyle, a uh, great family, uh, kids that keep us busy and traveling uh, quite a bit. Uh, and um, it's always good to get up every day and uh, face new challenges in your life.